My name is Brody Askew, I'm 16, I go to Lincoln High School. I do horticulture and PE and thought I could combine the two by trying turf management. Brody's come to New Zealand Cricket's High Performance Centre, which boasts three top quality grounds and a training complex. It is based at Lincoln University near Christchurch. Jared Carter, the New Zealand Cricket Turf Manager, will be showing Brody around. G'day Brody, Jared mate. How you doing? We're going to go for a bit of a walk around the grounds now, see what you think and see what, whether you think this will be a career for you. Alright. Let's go. First stop, the superb Burt Sutcliffe Oval, an international standard pitch. The playing pitch is the, the main part of the ground, um, so we've got to do obviously a lot of rolling, we've got to keep an eye on moisture levels, um, plus we've got to keep an eye on obviously the climate. We have stinking hot days that are, yeah. suck a lot of moisture out. Do you look after the practice areas as well? Yeah, that's all part of it. Um, obviously the practice wickets have got to mirror what's out in the middle. Yeah. All right. uh, we've got to prepare three nets in there for internationals that are exactly the same as what's out in the middle. In the modern game there is a lot of pressure on venues to provide not only adequate facilities but fantastic facilities. There's a lot of money being poured in by the sponsors. If wickets just aren't up to a high standard, they do risk losing those matches in future years. Today there's a match between the Australia women and New Zealand white ferns and the pitch or block has to be dry. Testing the soil for moisture is part of the routine. Yep, that's the half. We hope that that top two or three millimetres is bone dry and rock hard. Yeah. Or yeah. Be remaining reasonably moist down below. To get the moisture reading the sample is weighed, dried and weighed again. So is there such a thing as a perfect pitch? Uh, it's very hard to find, that's for sure. I mean, there's so many variables that can go into making a perfect pitch. Um, you want high moisture in the base to get a good amount of bounce. You want a, a nice even grass cover on the top, a bit more pace in the wicket. Yeah. You can have it right where you think you want it at the start of the day, but it, the weather of the day can change the pitch quite a bit itself. Good news, Brody's in for a sizzler, so Jared checks out evapotranspiration, or how much water will dry out from the soil. And it gives us an average over the past week for the evapotranspiration rates. Today's pitch is perfect, but the spare wicket alongside needs a light soak. What can make wickets hard to get right would be um, just not getting the basics right from the start. Uh, if you don't get enough pre-season rolling in, if you don't get enough, a very good grass cover um, during your renovation period, if you don't do your renovations right, they can all lead to an underperforming pitch. Done. Well done. But good turf management doesn't end with the block. There's a pretty big field around it. So what's the difference between an outfield and a block? Well, generally with a block we're going against most uh, sports turf practices. Uh, we're generally looking to compact that as much as possible. We don't provide any aeration. Uh, also don't have any thatch on a cricket block, whereas in an outfield, as we're doing now, we want to control the thatch. We want to provide a lot of aeration down below to allow the roots to get in nice and deep. And I'll show you what I mean by thatch is a lot of this dead organic material that builds up just underneath the surface of the grass. We take a core out here. We can see the organic matter building up in the surface, which is actually underneath the grass. That thatch offers something soft underfoot for the fielders to land on, but it needs to be controlled and the scarifier is the machine for the job. Right, what we've got under here, sneak under and have a look. You've got the blades that are running vertically. Yeah. They're the ones that will cut into the ground as they spin around, rotating the forward, cuts into the surface, removes all that thatch, and then just leaves it sitting on top. You ready to have a go? Right. Let's do it. Well, Brody's looking good, so what sort of person will be good for this job? Uh, someone who definitely likes a challenge. Very challenging environment, uh, working long hours. You've got to deal with, with factors such as the weather that you cannot control. Someone who loves the outdoors, it's a big part of it, loves their sport, loves watching sport at times. And horticulture is definitely another big factor that if they've been doing that at high school, would greatly benefit them. Yeah, it's not too bad Brody, a few lessons on the old straight lines mate and you could be a natural. Daniel Hooper has been an apprentice for New Zealand cricket for two years. So what have you been doing over your two years? Uh, basically you learn everything from uh, turf agronomy, through to using machineries, obviously preparing cricket wickets, which is uh, where my field is at the moment. Yeah. But uh, we obviously branch out into all sorts of things, soil types, everything like that. Alright. So yeah. So are you enjoying it? Yeah, I'm enjoying it a lot actually. Every day outside's a good one as far as I'm concerned, so yeah, I really love it. In this simple bat and ball game, technology's become part of the landscape. 
Sprinklers can be remotely programmed, how much water, where and when. And the famous New Zealand cricketer Bert Sutcliffe would never have thought of this, an entire transportable pitch. Well some of the more modern technology these days is, is seeing the um, implementation of the portable wickets around the country. There's now four venues in New Zealand that use them. Eden Park now has probably uh, the most, had the most games on their portable wickets now in the country. Swap the pitches over because the different codes require two different things. Uh, for rugby we have a sand tray full, um, full of sand and on top we have our normal surface for rugby. And then for cricket we have a number of pitches that we can swap between, between games as to whether it's a test match or a one dayer. Back at the Burt Sutcliffe Oval, the Australia White Ferns contest nears. So how important is it that the turf manager gets the pitch right? Um, you know, from a player's point of view, it's uh, important for us to showcase a really good game of cricket. Um, you know, some will want a little bit in it for the bowlers. Um, I'm a batsman, so I like it as flat as. Um, yeah. And you know, for, especially for women's cricket, we want to try and make our game uh, attractive for people to come and watch. It's really important that the turf managers get, get things right. Um, sometimes they make mistakes, um, but look here at Lincoln, they're absolutely fantastic. Thanks for the opportunity. No worries, I've appreciated all your work and I hope to uh, see you back here shortly. Alright, good Cheers. Cheers mate. Turf management is definitely a career option for me. Working outdoors, hands-on in the sport industry is definitely something I'd like to do. It takes three and a half years to gain a Level 4 National Certificate in Sports Turf Management through the Primary Industry Training Organisation. Qualifications are also available up to a diploma level. As well as on-the-job training and assessments, there are correspondence assignments and annual courses to attend. The training provided by this qualification sets you up with an industry-wide skill set, making it the ideal basis for advancing in all sectors of the turf industry. An apprentice's salary starts from about $25,000 per annum, and the potential earnings of a greenkeeper can be over $100,000. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.